And when we're talking about motivation and tobacco use, we really need to spend time. This is one of the, the differences. And I, I will uh, present this by saying for, uh, again, working in the background in, in substance use disorder and co-occurring disorder you know, over my career, the difference between what is just a straight drug and alcohol program where there's no mental uh, disorder involved is a different type of, of programming than when we have co-occurring disorder, mental and substance use. When we have co-occurring, we tend to slow it down. There's more repetition. There's a different kind of delivery of a similar program, but you, we, we've got to again make sure that uh, we're, we're meeting people in their pace of where this treatment and behavioral counseling would be of benefit to them. I will say that with tobacco use disorder as well. And this is the difference between the brief interventions that work really well in the, in the general community or general population. When we're talking about motivation in someone in a behavioral health setting, I may spend weeks talking to them in individual sessions of just uh, exploring with them, how is your life going to be better tobacco free? Because again, you're, what you're going to hear is superficial things versus if you, if you stay there and you, you, you don't move on, you, you're going to hear, I'll give you one quick example of this. And uh, a gentleman that I was working with who had some significant COPD, and he was also in, in treatment for his uh, alcohol use disorder, but he really wanted to stop smoking. He, the man couldn't breathe. He was, you know, one step away from the uh, supplement oxygen. So he was, a, I was working with him and, uh, you know, he, I met with him for an individual session. He wanted to talk about how he could include tobacco uh, uh, abstinence in his, his uh, treatment plan. And long story short, um, you know, what, I was asking him, why is this important to you? What do you anticipate uh, the, the, you know, where's the vision of where is this going? And, you know, the obvious thing would be, I can't breathe, dude. You know, what do you, what's, what's the problem here? You don't understand this? You want me to explain it? But I stayed with that focus. It was three sessions, actually, three individual sessions. By the third session, though, all of a sudden he started talking about the shame and guilt he has over not being able to play with his two young sons in the backyard because he can't breathe to toss around the football and how important being a father is to him and how important family is to him and how the cigarette smoking is interfering with his values that he grew up with in terms of what family means to him. Now, if I would have in the first session just kind of went with it, okay, you can't breathe, let's figure out how to slap on a patch and not smoke, uh, that would not have been meeting this man's needs. So by spending time with him, with the, where you get into more in-depth, complex uh, understanding of where a person is at with their tobacco use, this is where I call them the golden nuggets. This is where, because a lot of things we do with that. We then can use that as an affirmation. I know this, this gentleman then developed a keychain where he had pictures of his two sons, whereas we were talking about behavioral challenges of craving, of how to use that as a reminder of why this is important for me to, to make. So there was a, there's a lot of therapeutic uh, sort of tangible things you can do with this. But the important thing, one of the major differences I find in behavioral health is uh, Again, more intensive, slower, and then we see good things happen.